can follow you. Well, I didn't introduce myself for you who do not know who I am. My name is Tina Beiter and I am vice president in the European Weightlifting Federation. And I'm also chairwoman of technical committee. And together with the, the members of technical committee, Patrick Helgeson from Sweden, Trygve Vedun from Norway, Arajik Alavatjan from Armenia and Georgieta Jon from Romania. We have decided to make four online seminars for you because even though that we started participating in competition last year, we still do not have so many competitions. So we might be a little old and we need to be, you know, shaken up and, and get all the rules again. So we start today with Patrick Helgeson teaching us a little bit about the chief marshal position. And I'm very happy to see uh, we have some coaches with us because this is important for the ITOs to know how this uh, position functions, but it's also very important for the coaches to know how to use the chief marshal, um, not use the position, but how to know the tactic outside in the warm-up area. And I think that Patrick will tell a little bit more about that. And then um, next week on Monday, the 28th of March, we will have a technical controller position and we have a very special guest star. It's Taisto Kupola from, from Finland. Thank you so much for joining us today and on Monday. And then on the 6th of April, I will have a lecture about the jury work. And then on the 12th of April, Trygvedun will have a lecture about referee. So we hope that you will have uh, some nice days with us. And if you can only participate in one, don't worry, because we record it and you can see it after, I think, on our website or maybe on YouTube. We will find out and, and then you have the possibility to see it. But of course, we hope that you will join us for all four times. And then I hope to see many of you in Albania and we will have an online technical official meeting before Albania. Uh, just to go through the rules again and your positions for the European Championships. So enough from me. I will give the floor now to our special guest star for today, Patrick Helgeson from Sweden. Here you go. Thank you very much, Tina Weiter. We will start. This is the first time for me, so I hope the very best. I hope everyone can see the first page here. Everything okay, Tina? So we have the technical official courses, the chief marshal position today. This is uh, from the IWF technical committee and I have done some changes myself, but mostly the material is from the IWF. As a chief marshal, you need full knowledge, skill and concentration. And it could be long competition and you really need to concentrate at times. So do read the rules and regulations before competition. It's very important. The chief marshal's duty, well, it is to accept or refuse the modification made by the coaches on the attempt to be taken. We have to teach the coaches what they can do and what they cannot do. And we also need to communicate the information to the competition management system operator about requested attempts. Well, this is the information from the IWF. In EWF, we often need to use the computer by ourselves. So it's good to have two chief marshal at the same place so we can help each other with the computer also. I didn't say this before, Tina, but if you have any questions, so please don't hesitate to uh, send messages to Tina and she will moderate the questions all the time right i will thank you very much patrick i forgot that thank you so i will keep a little bit silent after each page here and you have time to send a question and then we can just can go back and see if we have some good answers to you 
And yeah, it's very good to be English speaking because you need to talk to every coaches. And if you can have many languages at the chief marshal table, it would, would be very good also. But at Olympic games and the big competitions, you need to be English speaking and international category one referee. And of course, appointed by the IWF. Here is your working area. This is all you do. Well, not only one athlete's card, but many athletes card. You could be up to 12 athletes in a competition. So you have to keep your eyes on every card. We have here the start number, number three. And the start number depends on the lot number. Every category with a body weight, the name, the nation. I usually write the nation with big, nice letters. So the coaches can spot the athlete's card at once. The coach signature and the entry total. Here you have the first attempt and they declare the weight at the weigh-in and then they can change it two times. Second attempt, well, this box is for me, the chief marshal. Here I write the automatic increment and then the coach can come and declare the weight and then they have first and second change on the second attempt. Third attempt, the first box is the chief marshals and then the coaches can use the other three boxes. Um, it's a good uh, to, for the marshals to use red pen and the coaches to use black pens or maybe blue pens. Then you clear can see who has done what on the athlete's card. Between snatch and clean and jerk. You need to calculate minimum weight of clean and jerk according to the 20 kilo rule and then write it clearly by using a bold red pen. It's very good for you as a chief marshal and it's very good for the coaches to know I can't go below this weight. So if they had 120 kilos in the first attempt of snatch, well, then they need 140 to come to 260 in total, which means 20 kilo below the entry total of 280. You see the athletes cards before you, of course, and you handle them all the time. You need to see the scoreboard screen too. If you have a computer right next to you, I guess it's no problem. But if you don't, you need to see a screen not far away that you can see all the numbers on. If you do something wrong when you type in the information in the computer or something wrong with the phone line or the, well, the, the information didn't go through, you need to check. Compare the weights on the cards and the scoreboard screen from time to time. Do it often. Don't hesitate. If any corrections are required, contact the competition management system operator immediately, or as we do in Europe, change it yourself. If something is very urgent, don't hesitate. Just catch the phone and call call to the jury table, call to the speaker or the secretary and correct the information. So here we have the different cards on the table and we check it all the time with the scoreboards. No okay. questions, Patrick, so you can just continue. Yeah, there. well, I just Listening. need to hesitate myself a bit, <laughs> okay? So we have some rules for the chief marshal. 
the chief marshal must check the change is valid or not by checking the other athlete's attempt. The calling or order rule must be respected. I, and I guess this is the hardest work for a chief marshal. And you have to have an eye on the clock too. Be sure that you can see the clock. Here we have four lifters starting on the same weight. And as you know, that means that start number one will start and then two and three and four, nothing strange about that. Oh, it's a good lift for number one. And as a good chief marshal, I write 151 and then the coach comes 155 they want. Number two lifts, good lift. Oh, number two wants 160, impressive. Number three, good lift also. And 155 for the next lift. Number four, 150, oh, 160 also. Okay, it's time for number one, 155. And who's next? Mm, should be number three. It's also 155. Oh, good lift from number one. The automatic inc increment, 156, and they want 160. It's time for number three. Oh, after clock had been started for number three is 155. Then number two came for a change to 155. Uh, they should have been called earlier. So if number three is called and the clock has started, you have to say to number two, sorry, you can't take 155. But as a good chief marshal, you can always say you can take 156 if you want. But 155, no, not today. So we have the four rules, the calling order. First of all, the weight of the barbell, the lightest weight first. Number two, well, it's the number of the attempt. Lowest number first, so if it's the same weight they want, you check which number it is of the attempt. And then you have to check which athlete who lifted earliest because they are first. And if everything is the same, like when you have the first attempt, then the start number decides. So you need to check this for decreasing. It's very important when there is a decrease. So in order to decrease the weight, the clock must not have started for the athlete. So pay attention to the clock. You first hear the speaker and then you hear, see the clock start. I will say this many times, pay attention to the timing clock and make sure when you come to the competition, the first, before the first competition day, that everything is all right at the chief marshal table and you can see the timing clock. If you can't, you must tell the organizers so you can have a timing clock to watch. So when the coaches come, check the timing clock and who is called. Are they allowed to decrease or increase? Increase, no problem. If it's a one minute attempt, well, the increase must be done within the first 30 seconds. If it's a successive attempt, two minutes attempt, then you need to do a declaration within the first 30 seconds, and then you can do further increases. And the change of weights, it's the same here. It must be done before the last 30 seconds. And the change of weights, it's only possible if they have declared 
within the first 30 seconds in a two minute lift. So we go through the two minute lift. The coach must declare the next weight to the marshal within the first 30 seconds of the two minutes, even if they want the automatic increment. Otherwise, the athlete has to accept the weight shown by the competition management system. Um, this is for two minute lifts. There are lots of coaches that come running and declare weights directly after they have lifted. They don't need to, but I guess it's a good practice for a coach to declare so that you don't miss it when it is a two minute lift. So yeah, I guess declare the weight. If you're uncertain, it's never wrong to declare a weight. And as a chief marshal, if you can't see the watch, well, you can hear it. Maybe you're busy doing some other paperwork and you can't look at the watch all the time. You will hear it. After 30 seconds, there will be a second. And before the last 30 seconds, there will be a second signal. If the coach declared, then they can change the weight two times until the last 30 seconds. We go through example. They succeeded with 100 kilo in the first attempt. And the automatic increment, increment is 101, of course. The coach comes to declare 101 or maybe 102, and they do it before 30 seconds and scan. Then it's okay to do changes. And then the coach come to change to 105, it's okay. And they can change one more time because they have done the de declaration before the first 30 seconds has gone. The last 30 seconds, no changes can be made. Not on two minutes lifts and not on one minute lifts. For example, the athlete succeeded 100 kilo at the first attempt, and they want to take 101 for the second attempt. Well, it's not necessary for the coach to declare 101 if they're certain they will take the attempt at 101, because the next attempt will be 101 automatically. But if there is no declaration made within the 30 seconds, the athlete must take the automatic increment. For example, in this case, 101. So what is the automatic increment? Well, if it's a good lift, then it's one kilo up. And if it's a no lift, then it's the same weight as in the previous attempt. We can see, see it here at the athletes card. They want 120 and it's a good lift. That means the automatic increment is 121. They want 130 and sorry, no lift then the automatic increment is the same. So Patrick, we have a question Yep. from Erik Jan from Netherlands. He asked, just to confirm, if a coach declares within 30 seconds a weight that declares a, a weight higher than automatic increment, increment, it is in fact three changes. Okay, <laughs> let's say. And sorry for me, for my reading, sorry. That's okay. You can check it here. 120, it's a good lift. And the chief marshal states 121. It's the automatic increment. Well, then the coach comes and says, he declares a weight, 130. After that, there is a possibility to make the first change and then the second change. So the first box is a declaration, declaration, declaration and then you have 
first change and second change. The box or pair is the chief marshal's box. It's not for the coaches. Okay. So to, to just to give a short answer, you have two changes if you declare the automatic increment. Yeah. So if you declare 121, you want 121, you sign 121, then you don't declare anything more. I usually, if they want the automatic increment and signs here, I strike out the declared weight because then they have declared the automatic. Or if you want, the coach can just write one, two, one here and then sign. It's either way. Just. And Eric Jan, he has understood it. So, very good explanation. Thank you. And never hesitate to ask because even if you're at the competition and you don't really know what to do, don't hesitate. Just ask the chief marshal and they will help you with the athlete's card. And if nobody comes within 30 seconds, I usually strike out these boxes because after 30 seconds, they can't do any changes. So I strike out the boxes so they can't be used. And usually after 30 seconds and it's the last attempt, I will take the card to myself because there's no more changes to be done. So I, I put away the card. And the 20 kilo rule, the total of the starting weights in snatch and clean and jerk cannot be lower than 20 kilo, both for women and for men, below the announced entry total. So if a woman has the entry total of 200 kilos or a man, then the total of the first attempts must not be lower than 180. Snatch 85, clean and jerk 100. Well, that means 185. It's okay. Snatch 75, clean and jerk 110. It's also okay. 185. But snatch 78 and clean and jerk 100. It's too little. So you must tell the coaches, you may need to race either the snatch or the clean and jerk. And if they had what 78 in the first snatch attempt, then you need to tell the coaches, you need a higher weight in the first attempt. If they don't put on a higher weight, they will be disqualified. So it's very, very important. I have had some explanations for this one during the time here as the chief marshal. It is the first attempt that's in, in the rule, not the second and not the third. So even if you make better lifts afterwards here in the third, 85, it doesn't mean anything because it's the first attempt that's in the rule. No decreasing because it's the first attempt. The total must be calculated by each first attempt. So if during the snatch, they want to decrease the first attempt of snatch and you go below the 20 kilo, then you must tell the coaches, if you want to decrease the snatch, then you must increase the first attempt of clean and jerk. Do you really want to do this? Are you that good clean and jerker? So you want to go up? And if the coaches come and want to decrease the weight and you see that, oh, it's the 20 kilo rule, then you have to tell them, you have to take the first attempt at this weight and nothing less. So it's very important to communicate with the coaches and have a good communication all through the competition. There will be messages, warning messages 
on the competition system. So even if you don't see it at first, you will see it. There will be signals coming. And you will have help from jury members and technical controllers too. If you don't spot it, they will come to you and say, something is wrong here. Please correct it. Because if you don't correct it, the lifter will be disqualified, taken out of the competition. Okay, we have the rules here. And then we have the coaches. And from time to time, many coaches come to the table. And from time to time, they come at the same time too. So here we have the announcer, the speaker, load us 150 kilos, please. And they come and say, ah, I want 151. Uh, I want 155. I want, I want to raise from 152 to 155. I want to decrease from 150 to 149. Which one is more important here? You need to know because you don't take them in the, the order they come, but deal what you need to deal with at first. I would say check this one out first because the loaders are loading 150. Is it okay for this lifter to go down to 149? Check this out first before the clock has started. If the clock starts at 150, they can't go down. So don't forget, always check the timing clock and always check wait time and calling order. Is 149 okay? And then you can take care of 151 or 155. It's depend on which lifter would lift first. I think it's very good to be at least two chief marshal when everything is happening at the same time. So stay calm and it's no need to take care of who came to the table first. Take care of those who are most important at this time. So a summary here, the valid validity for decreasing quick decisions must be made. What is the current weight? They can't take 155 if they're already lifting 156. Timing clock request for 155 is invalid if the clock has already started 156. And then the sequence of the competition. Number three is 155. Well, it can be invalid if the clock has started for 155. Why? It's number three. Well, check the lifts earlier here. Number two starts at 130. Then it's number three, 130. Who's next? It's number three. They want 145. And then number two, 150. So if both get 155, well, then it should be number three before number two because they have lifted earlier, 145. So the clock must not have started for number two. Patrick, we have a question from Emilia. In situation when coaches decrease first snatch about five kilo and 20 kilo is not kept in this moment, then coaches or marshals should change clean and jerk first attempt. Yes, up to the 20 kilo rule indeed. And you must do it at the same time. When they decrease the snatch, then you tell them to increase the cleaner jerk at the same time. And if you don't spot it at the time, you need to do it before the warm up for the cleaner jerk. Very important. Coach or Marshall, she's asking. Well, it's the coach who needs to declare the weight and do the changes. The Marshall doesn't do the changes. It's the coach and he will sign the paper also. 
but he will if if there is a problem with the five five kilos less than um, for the twenty kilo, then the chief marshal will tell the coach it's not possible. You have to yeah. do it like this. Yeah. yeah, and then the coach says okay, and he signs. Hmm? Well, he do signs because if he doesn't sign, they will be disqualified. So. <laughs> hmm. Okay, Emilia, I hope you got, yeah. Okay, thank you, she says. Thank you. So what I'm suggesting is keep a good communication with the coaches throughout the competition. Say hello to everybody, be nice. And they will trust you when it's time to do some serious business. Like this is not allowed. <laughs> the relation is very important. Good to have a good communication for a good competition and for the athletes to do their very best. Yes, and it, it is completely the same with technical controller. You need to be out there, be friendly, be polite, and then you have a damn good competition. So so if we're having a good competition, well, the athletes will have an even better competition, and that's what it's all for. So some tips to stay calm. Prepare your own red and black pens. Often when I come to a new country at the airport, they will check my bags and they will start asking, okay, what about all these pens? And then I explain to them, oh, we have a laugh. Concentrate always on the current weight announcement. And oh, there you have it again, the timing clock. Compare weights on the cards and scoreboard monitor from time to time. Is it the same in the computer as on the cards? Is it not? Do something about it. I usually put a black pen on the next athlete's cards so the coaches are ready to a quick change because they always are in a hurry. Help them as much as possible. And if they're late, well, you have to tell them you're late. Sorry, just put the take the card away. Um, to stay calm, I usually use my imagination. What is going to happen? Who will come for a decrease, and what can they decrease to? If you have a plan already made, it's easy to say, "Yes, you can do it," or "No, you cannot do it." You can decrease to this weight or to that weight, but not to this weight. So imagination and tell the future before it's here. So placement of chief marshal. Normally in the warm up area or very, very close to the warm up area because the coaches must reach you soon very soon you need to have good communication with the secretary and with the jury and you must see the competition clock and hear the signals and you must see a screen with the athletes attempts no problem in europe because you have a computer right next to you and there must be enough room for coaches and as I said before, check this before the competition, before the first day. If you're a chief marshal, you need to check that everything is good at the chief marshal table. And if it's not, go tell the organizers or tell the jury president that something needs to be done here. It can look like this. Here we have the president as the chief marshal and a very good Taisto Coppola, also chief marshal. And we have the Spanish coach coming for, a, I guess, a declaration, maybe an increase. I don't know. But they're situated in the middle of the warm-up area. It's very easy to come and go to the chief marshal table. Uh, in these times, this is from 2019, we also have a screen for the COVID. I don't know what the rules are going to be in Albania, but the last competition I went to, we had a screen around here. So we didn't have 
any infections. And yeah, we have a question. Yes, Patrick, please. are you ready for that? It's from Thais to Coppola. I would oh. like to suggest that all Chief Marshal placed the computer card similar way, like reading the book from left to right. One, two, three. Yes, it's in the right order. I want to have the starting order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And keep it the same way because the coaches are coming there every day and maybe every competition and they need to see it the same way all the time they don't need to look for the cards it needs to stay in the same place so don't don't change the places for the cards it really needs to be very easy for the coaches to spot their own card good point both Taisto and Patrick thank you and my suggestions for you, train, sit next to a chief marshal and learn. If you're uh, not on duty as a referee, you can always come to the chief marshal table and sit down and look at the work is done and you will learn. You also need to learn how to operate a computer and the competition program. So you need you know how to type in and if something is wrong change it to what it needs to be in the competition program i would say don't sit alone it's so easy to make a mistake and it's if you're human you do make mistakes and if you're two you will spot the mistakes before something really bad happens and when something goes wrong, act on it, do something about it. People will spot if you do something wrong, so do something about if it goes wrong. Communication is A, B, C, D. It's everything in the chief marshal role. Okay. We have another question from Basa. That's Beza. good, yes. And then we have one from Medim. So yep. I will start with Beza. Sometimes there are a lot of coaches in front of the chief marshals and want to change. In case of this situation, how can we manage this? Well, you need to know if somebody wants to decrease a weight and you need to know if who is the next one to lift, who is announced. Because if the speaker says number one will lift, then you must much must let the coach come forward if they want to increase the weight. So who is next to lift? Check that out. And please have a good, a big table so it's easy for the coaches to come there. I hope it was uh, answer enough for you, Beza. And uh, Nadim from Bosnia is saying it's much better to have the cards according to weight, first card, first competitor, etc. How do you say, how do you, what do you mean about that, Patrick? I say, no, <laughs> I want to have the cards in the start number order because then the card is on the same place for the coach every time and they know where it is. So if I'm the chief marshal or the jury president, the cards will be in start number order. Yes, and it's very visible because it's a big one or a big two, number two or a big number three. It's very easy to see that I my athlete is on platform one, so I have card number one, Yeah. right? Yeah. And if they have lifted all, all their attempts in the snatch, then I will remove the cards. So at, in the end, there will not be so many cards, at the, but they will be in the same place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Emilia is asking, use only one black pen. No, you need to have more black pens because if there are many coaches coming, they need to do their changes. But you need to know who has done the changes. So check. Yeah. If there has been a rush, go back and check every card so you don't miss any increase or decrease. And Taisto is... Uh 
also commentating on Beza's question because he says one of the chief a technical controller's job is to keep order in front of the chief marshal table and he will tell you a lot about that when he will have the lecture. Yeah, I really love technical controls because they they help you as a chief marshal. Often the coaches, they stand next to, really next to the chief marshal table if they need to do something. And then you have to say, sorry, don't stand just here. Don't sit in my lap. You can come <laughs> here when you need to do something. It's just because you are so friendly, Patrick. Yeah. Well, we, have, we have another question from Peter. Yep. He says, hi, is there any progress regarding the implementation of electronic athletes cards? It was already tested at an IWF competition that time as a smartphone or tablet application in 2017. Yeah, we've heard about that for a long time and sorry to say no, not yet. I don't know how, how the work is progressing, but it would be really cool to have it in the future. But of course, if this system will work really good. <laughs> there will be no chief marshal. <laughs> so we have a, a question from Salima and says, I do not understand. We can take two or three change after the automatic progression. Thanks. So you have to you have to say it again. Well, let's see if we can check this out. Going back a bit. So this box is for the chief marshal. And then the coach can do, can write a weight here. After that, they can come and write a weight here and they can write a weight here. If they want, they can write one, two, one, if they want, and then one, two, two, and one, two, three. So they have two changes after the yeah they do a they do a de, they do a they declare yeah and after they have declared they can do two changes and sometimes well the declaration is also a change well but we say one you declare a weight and then you can do two changes but as I said sit next to a chief marshal and it will be easier to understand i guess hmm. we have more questions emilia is uh, is all about the black pen she says yes but too much black pen and uh, not to do a mess and you cannot control who do the changes yes that's right so you need to check who is doing what and who is important to check first so you can't have one pen it's too little because the coaches need to do something very quick. So you need to have more, more black pens and you need to check who will I deal with first, which card is first. And then you can just stack up the cards with changes and put them into the computer. Mm. So I guess maybe up to three pens is nothing strange about that. And this, is, this was just before the COVID-19 situation. For the last competitions, we have given the coaches a pen themselves, so they were not touching anybody else's. So mm -hmm. we do not know how Albania will be, but we will also provide lots of pens. Yeah, so, so there will not mm -hmm. be just one pen, no. <laughs> and Salima says, thank you for the answer. And Eric Jan from Netherlands, he says, if technology fails, paperwork is hard evidence. So it I is. think that's why we still use it. And Taisto Coppola is also commentating. He says more pens are needed because sometimes the coaches forget to give back the pen after making increment. Well, I have noticed that too. So that's why I always bring loads of pens. <laughs> um, if not being stopped at the airport. <laughs> well, you could be stopped at the airport, but normally you uh, stay at the hotel. And I know the hotels want to 
show their mark. So I I grabbed some pens at the hotel too. Mm -hmm. And Greg Tassos from Greece says, finally, we have three changes. And yes, in, in one way you can say that, but um, you want to comment on that, Patrick? No. Nope. no. <laughs> so that was it, no more questions. You want to say something uh, to, to, oh, we have one more, That's Peter. Good. Yeah, Peter says, what exactly has to be done before the final call? Number plus signature must already be on the paper before the final call signal, right? Starting writing the change is, in my opinion, not enough. <sighs> it's a tricky one, that one. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> so I guess I want to have I want to have it on the paper. And then there will all be some seconds before I have it in the computer. So, yeah, but I'm, uh, if I see the coaches running, coming to me, I, I always want to help. I always want to help. And I think it's about using your common sense. Yeah. Yeah. Because they could have, there could be something with the computer or whatever. So if they have started, then. But if they come, I hear the, the signal and then they come. Yeah. Sorry. I, I grab the paper and say, sorry, not this time. And if they fall because they are in a hurry, then it's their problem as well, because they could have been, been be there earlier. There, being there earlier. And I usually say to coaches, don't come one coach to one athlete. You need to be at least two coaches for an athlete mm. because you need to have somebody next to the scoreboard somebody next to the video somebody next to the chief marshal if you're a one coach only then you are always in a hurry and you don't have the time to think properly which weight is the best so you can have free coaches for one athlete and please use that rule hmm. and the free coaches should not stand beside and watch the lift. You need to have somebody in the chief marshal in the warm up area all the time. That's my opinion. Yeah. And Taisto is uh, commentating that I prefer that the writing has started when the time is still there. Yeah. So we have another question from Lynette. Does the chief marshal have the ability to stop the clock? if a 31 second has just signed so that there is time to transfer to computer? Different things on different systems, but normally in Europe, yes, we can stop the clock. But even then I can, if you're on IWF system, you can call to the computer operator and tell them, stop the clock. I have something wrong back here, stop the clock. If the chief marshal isn't working, the competition will not work. Okay. So Peter says, thank you. And we do not have any more questions. So we have 78 viewers. Thank you so much for that. Patrick, do you want to say something at the end before I have something to say and then we say good night? Maybe I should say it one more time. Check the timing clock. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, stay calm. Use help from others. Don't sit there alone, be two persons there. And if you're new at the work, train as much as you can. Then it will be easier for you the next time. Thank you, everybody, for listening to me tonight. And the floor is yours, Tina. Sorry, thank you so much, Patrick. It was very good. <clears throat> In the European Weightlifting Federation, we have decided that the chief marshal position is, as any other position, an important one. But if we have good chief marshals, then the competition is running smoothly and we do not have 
many stops and wrong weights and angry coaches coming to the jury table. So we have decided every time to have two chief marshals at the table. And uh, we also try to have one very experienced chief marshal and then another one, maybe not so experienced, but as we know, who can learn it. And as Patrick says, it's very valuable to go out and watch and just learn. You can sit, you can help. If you are not on duty, go and see because it's, it's out there that the whole competition is running. It's really exciting. And, and if you are a technical controller as well, you, you can see everything is going, it's happening out there. So, so it's very exciting and very, yeah, very good to be out there. So, so at, in European championships, we also always have two chief marshals, category one referees or I, ITOs. So, um, yeah, so I will just say to you, jump into it. Maybe you, you will think now oh, all the numbers, but when you're in it and when you are, it's all going on, then you would love it. So please contact me if you think you want to do it in another European Championships, then I will try to put you on that position. But um, for Albania, we will have Patrick at, in the one group and we will have Taistu in the other group. So, so that is very, very good for, for the Chief Marshal positions. So yes, that's all from me. I am really happy that this uh, was a possibility to do this and with so many viewers. Thank you so much also for my colleagues and at the technical committee for believing in this. So thank you so much. And I hope to see you on Monday for the, the presentation of the technical controller um, position and the lecturer is Taisto Coppola. So have a great night and thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.